hundreds of times that my father has given lectures on Noah's Ark from one end of the continent to the other, from the bottom of the continent to the top, this is the first time I've ever had the joy of introducing him. <laughs> Charlie, my father. A, t- a time table of Arthur Wentz. Uh, Genesis 74 says that seven days before the flood, the Lord asked Noah to take himself and all the animals onto the ark. I wonder why it was that he took them onto the ark seven days before the flood. Then I realised you have to wait a while for all the animals to get used to this strange environment and Noah to get used to feeding them before the rains came and it started to walk. The fountains of the great deep were then opened up on the 17th day of the second month in the 600th year of Noah's life. And the ark rested on Mount Ararat on the 17th day of the seventh month. And then so on. The water prevailed 150 days, which of course was five months. When you take that, uh, that date away from that, you get five months. There's a strange thing there because it says there are 150 days equal to five months. And I think it was telling us something. I think it was telling us that back there before the flood, there were 30 days in every month. And that seemed quite natural too. And I think when the Lord remakes the earth in its original splendour, there will be 360 days in the year. What happened to give us a lot uh, more days in the year? I won't tell you. It's not now. The animals went forth on the 27th day of the second month in the 601st year of Noah's life. If I take this date from here down to here and subtract them, I get 17 days over a year. That's a long time, isn't it? A long time. 17 days over a year that they were in the ark. It's made up, of course, from seven days before the flood. 150 days afloat and 220 days maroon on the side of a hill for 220 days, which made a total of 377 days that they were in the ark. Can you make a, a, a model of Noah's ark? Well, I tried all sorts of things, and this is what I came up with. You see, you have to start with something like that. It had three decks in it. And then I thought, well, I've got to have a gap in the top to let the air out. And then this thing comes to mind, a gap up the top, a gap's there so that stale air can get out. What have I got then? I've got water pouring in there. You've seen a lot of rain recently. Just imagine a deluge coming in there what, what do you do with all the water? Now they've got this idea. And I put water troughs there on each side of those that gap and water trough down the bottom so that as the vessel was rocking and it rained, the water would fall out of those troughs. And I've got the decks show sawtooth shape so that and this, door, this outside wall is a bit shorter than the inside wall, so the water would never splash over that way, nor would splash over this way, onto the deck. It would gradually work its way across the deck and then help to clean it. There's still a lot of work, no doubt, for Noah and his family. Oh, what have we got? Oh, yeah, look here. This is not my idea. I've never seen one of these in my life. It, 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 it's a bilge pump for pumping water out of the vessel. And just by the rocking of the vessel, it operates. It has no moving parts in it, no valves. It just picks up the water, moves it up, and pours it out. We might get some this time. Yeah. I've never ever seen one of those before. Matter of fact, I used to uh, take it into work and I put it on top of a cabinet 
and I'd say to one of the other engineers there, oh, have you ever seen a, 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 a bilge pump with no moving parts? You know what they say? A bilge pump with no moving parts? And I stand aside like this, like, you know, like you know what they say then? They say, bilge pump with no moving parts. <laughs> But the Lord gave me that, I can't, can't take credit for that. Why did you need that bilge pump? Why would they need it? Well, the water's going to build up in there. Coming through the roof? Through the roof. And so, we, we caught the water as it rained, we caught the water in these troughs. One trough, I believe, would be flowing that way, the other back the other way, they had one of these bilge pumps at each end. And the reason the water would all go one way, it have little, could have little flaps in it, which, which only let the water go in one way. The water would come into a section and, and swim, 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 sway back and forth and push itself underneath the next flap and so on. Be easy to create that so the water one way would come down here, the water the other one go the other way and be picked up by bilge pumps like that. I reckon the ends were used for the storage of food. There's more than three times as much food in there, the space in there for the food, than they would need the 377 days. And if, as you have a look in here later on, you'll see down on the bottom deck, there are three decks, of course, in the ark. On the bottom deck, I've got the amphibious animals and the reptiles, because they would like to have the dampest part of the vessel. You agree with this? Yes, I agree. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And on the top deck, I've got what are called the clean animals. The uh, uh, animals that have cloven hooks and chew the cud. Also, I've got Noah's family up the top, too. I thought they were clean animals. <laughs> on the middle deck, I've got all the other animals. Lions, the tigers, the elephants, and so on, all on that deck. And you'll see them in here. Uh, I, I had to make quite a few of these animals myself, but a lot of them I was able to get hold of. Down in here, you'll see uh, the snakes. And I, I made those myself out of nails. I bent them all up and painted them, blew them down. I had to blew everything down because this travels, you see, in the trailer behind the car. And, and why I blew all these animals down is so I don't want anybody to pinch them either. <laughs> I, I was standing there by the ark one day, and this little boy put his finger and broke a little animal off. <laughs> I didn't build him over the years. <laughs> Just in case someone wanted to ask me that question later. This is a strange thing. God said at one time to Noah, take two of all the animals into the ark. Another time he said, take seven of all the clean animals. That's a funny thing. You think God would know the difference. Why did he change his mind? He didn't change his mind. He knew the end from the beginning. But he wanted the people who weren't he didn't want him in the ark to realise there was space for them if they were interested. And he wanted Noah and his family to realise that that was possible. And that's why uh, uh, Noah went out uh, with, with a lot of... Uh, uh, what's the word? Whatever he said. <laughs> uh, and um, so... Uh, eventually, of course, the only Noah and his own family, his three sons and three daughters, were in the ark. Now, what you'll see the, the, uh, and the area where, where Noah and his family were, you'll see Noah there in bed, pretending he's got a sick headache, while the ladies are over there doing all the work. I wanted to make this look as natural as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see also, that's the doorway there. And there's a, a ramp coming up and a ramp coming down. If you're really clever, you'll find two, two staircases in there as well. All these things would have to have been supplied, of course. Now, I've got seven 